morning, we're going to do a little special prayer for children, for children. How many of you notice that they're trying to mandate inoculations uh, for everyone, all the children? 5 through 11, 11 through 18, they don't need it. This is not polio. This is not, this is not a children's disease. This is not measles, mumps, rubella, no. We don't need it. Now, have children died from this? Yes. But very few, less than, way less than 1% of 1%. And they're trying to turn their lives upside down. Now, here's the problem. Once you receive the inoculation, if something negative happens to you, which is unexpected because they never told you that it might, you're not suing anybody. You're not gonna sue anybody. So this you have to understand. This is where we're headed for. But we're gonna ask God to protect the children. They're innocent. They don't understand. They trust in their parents. They trust in all of the, this world to protect them. And if you have children and they want, they want to inoculate them, you be very careful. Very careful. Now, I'm not saying against all inoculations. I'm just talking about this COVID-19 thing that they've got going. Okay? How many of you hear what I'm saying? Okay? Hear what I'm saying? Okay, be careful. Be careful. 75% of the people that are dying from COVID now have been inoculated. They've, been, they've had the shot. How many of you know that? Raise your hand. 75% of the people that are dying now already had the shot. Now in the beginning, they told us if we took the shot, that wouldn't happen. Come on. This is what happened. So be careful. You have to really know that what you're doing is what God wants you to do. I'm not, I don't tell anybody to take it or not to take it. I just said, you pray, God will show you what to do. Some people have to take it because it work. Good. They're going to have to ask God to protect them from the shot. Really, that's what it is. So we need, we need God's help. And we're going to stand right now, and we're going to ask God to protect children. Children are innocent. They are innocent, and they trust and their families and their people. There's gonna be there's gonna be millions of girls that are gonna be infertile and not gonna be able to reproduce. That's right. But you're not suing anybody, they're not gonna let you sue. I saw that years ago in Canada with my wife. That's a socialized system. They've talked about how great it is. But if the doctor makes a mistake, you're not suing anybody. Nobody. You're not going after anybody. So you better get a hold of God. You got children, just make sure you're doing what's right. You may have to stop work and educate your kids and go on food stamps. I'm talking drastic here. You gotta make the right decision. So God knows, I don't know. Most people I know that have received the shot have done okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. We're praying specifically for children now. Father, protect the innocent children in this nation and in these states and in the state of Rhode Island. Protect the innocent children whose parents are believing everything that they're told. Protect them from harm and danger. Protect us, protect us from irresponsible people that don't care as long as they're in tight with the right people who don't care. Protect us, watch over us. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. We praise you, we praise you, we glorify you. Because true protection is not in the shot, it's in God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, we praise you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. 
We thank you for the, protecting the innocent. We curse what they're trying to do. We curse it and we bind it and stop it dead. Let there be a revolution of the parents. Let the parents go down and say, we're not doing this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As this world gets worse, and as we come up to the end, we are in the end times, you're going to have to be able to understand what the Spirit is saying to you. Going to have to, and he might not see the same thing to everybody, but you have to understand what God is saying, what he's saying. And he's saying, Get close to me, hear the voice of God, hear what God is saying, and listen all the time. Listen, listen. Thank you, Jesus. So, we, I'm not against, as I said before, I'm not against people taking a shot. You haven't, you haven't said that. I've said, Be careful. That you know what you're doing and God has told you to do it. That's all. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we thank you today, Lord, because you're protecting all of us. You're protecting us. You've got the angels watching over us. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We're praying for innocent children who haven't lived their lives. And Satan wants to snatch their lives before they can live their lives. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. God is so good. Turn with me to Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Last week we preached on corporate responsibility, the whole body, all being responsible, all being responsible for somebody else's sin. We preached on Achan. How many remember that story on Achan? Achan sins. Achan takes something that doesn't belong to him. God said, this is mine. And Achan sees the gold and the silver and the fancy clothes. And he takes a load and he buries it in his tent. Under the rugs. And that one sin, that one sin, cost Israel the next battle. And they lost about 30 or 40 men in the battle. And God said, the children of Israel have acted corruptly and they have not listened to my, my command. Now, when you read it, it says Achan did it. Achan did the sin. Achan did exactly what God told him not to do. But God blamed everybody. Everybody was under the wrath of God. As Americans, we don't understand that. We don't, because we've been taught that you are personally responsible. Now, this generation is teaching in school that nobody is responsible. How's that? Nobody is responsible for anything. Whatever you do is okay. That's what they're getting from the culture. Nobody's wrong. Everybody's right. All the burning and the looting last year in 2020 was okay. That was okay. That was okay. That was all okay. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's nuts. You can't have that. 
You can't have that. You can't have that. A civilization and a country can't have that. And believe me, it won't last. If and when the socialists take over, uh, totally over, you won't have any of that anymore. That will all be gone. It will all be over. But anyway, we learned that the whole body, the whole nation of Israel was responsible and became uh, in sin, literally in sin, because of what one person did. What we try to help you understand is what you do affects somebody else. What I do affects this whole congregation. What you do affects me. That's the way it is. And we affect each other. And God wants you to understand that. He wants you to understand it. Now, <clears throat> the negative effect on Achan was his family. They all were destroyed together. God destroyed all of them. His wife, his children, everything. His animals, his donkeys, his goats, everything got destroyed. Everything. God said, bring them here. That's it. They're all going down. And they did. They did. Today's uh, world, that would never fly. That would never fly. That would be uh, murder. Total murder. And nobody would understand it. And everybody would be against it. Everybody would be. But anyway, at that point, in that time, God was saying, remember, there's corporate responsibility. The body is responsible. America is going to be responsible for the sin of America. We're all going to be responsible. But, thank God, there is forgiveness. On the other side, we can have forgiveness. God gives us forgiveness. Say thank you, Jesus. There isn't anything that goes down that can't be forgiven. I often wondered if Achan would have gone to Joshua and said, I made a mistake, now, this is all that I wanted. What would have happened? That's all hypothetical, we don't know. But I do know from what I know about God, it would, the judgment would not have been, have been so bad, I don't think the family would have been destroyed. He might have been destroyed. But I don't think the family would have been destroyed. But by not confessing, they paid a big price. Forgiveness, you're going to see, we're going to look at it right now, Psalm 32, is conditioned upon confession. You want God to forgive us. We all want God to forgive us when we confess our sins. And the Bible says that he does. First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to forgive us from all unrighteousness. Not some of it, all of it. Everything gets forgiven when you confess. It's when you hold back and don't confess that creates a situation that's destructive. It's destructive. So, David learns this lesson. King David learns this lesson. And he talks about it in Psalm 51, but we're not preaching from the other day, and in Psalm 32, right here. He commits adultery and he learns that God is not happy with him and he's going to have to confess it. And he holds on to it and he hides his sin. He was very good at hiding his sin. But his generals knew that he had sinned. They all, they figured that one out. When you're with street guys, they figure out one, two, three when you when you did something wrong. They know all that. Because they live in their whole life in that, in that realm. <laughs> So he learns a lesson that by holding on to his sin, he gets sick. He gets sick. He's pushed down emotionally. He's pushed down physically. His body suffers because he will not confess his sin. He suffers. Now, this does not address, which we are going to address, the issue of people that have no conscience. David had a conscience. And that's why he got physically sick. Because he knew God. He was a friend of God. 
And when he committed his sin, it weighed on him. It weighed on him. There are people that have to have disaster in order to heal, hear God. How many of you know what I'm talking about? They have to have a negative situation in order to hear God. Hallelujah. It's okay. They hear him at the last moment. <laughs> they hear him at the, the last three minutes of time. They hear God. And then they change. They flip around. And they ask God to forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And guess what? He does when he confesses. He does. Thank you, Jesus. He does. Amen. Hallelujah. I had a friend I've often talked about periodically who was the American commandant of Spandau Prison in Berlin after World War II. How many of you know what that's all about? How many of you know a little bit of history? That's where they, that's where they imprisoned the ones that were the German officers that were not executed for war crimes. Okay? And the major war crime was crimes against humanity. There's nothing written about that. They just said, you sin against humanity by killing innocent people. You cross the line. And they did cross the line big time. They did. But anyway, he knew a lot of high-ranking Nazis. He knew a lot of them. And he told me a lot of fascinating stories. And one story he told me about, just before Hermann Goring committed suicide, the chaplain went to his wife and said, have you talked to Mr. Goring about eternity? There's an eternity out there. There's a forever. You're gonna leave here, and they're gonna, they're gonna, uh, they're gonna kill you, you know? They're gonna end your life. They're gonna terminate your life. She went to him and said, Daddy, I wanna be together with you in heaven, with everybody. He said, I was too bad. I killed too many people. I was too bad. The chaplain said to her, go back and talk to him again. See if he'll pray. He never would. He said, I'm too bad. God can't forgive me. I did too many bad things. God can't forgive me. Do you ever meet people like that? I have. Yeah. They feel they can't be forgiven. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. God is able to forgive anybody if they confess their sins. First John chapter 1 verse 9, they confess their sins. He is faithful and just Amen. to forgive them and to cleanse them of all unrighteousness. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. And you get the sermon before the sermon, but anyway, we're going to get it here in a second. He never did it. He committed suicide. He had a cyanide tablet, he bit into it, he died immediately. They all carried, incidentally, they all carried cyanide tablets. So if they were captured, they committed suicide. They didn't wait around. But God gave him a chance. Say hallelujah. God gives everybody a chance. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. To what? To confess and to forsake and turn around. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, let's get into the word. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 32. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Don't ever say God doesn't bless me. He does it right there. Your sin is forgiven, you're blessed. Amen. You're blessed. Your sin, when you, your sin is forgiven, notice, it is covered. Goes all the way back to Genesis 1, where God made coverings for people. You know why we have coverings on? Clothes? Because of sin. Because of sin. Your sin is covered. Say hallelujah. You're blessed. Put your hands up and just thank God. Lord, I thank you. You forgave all for every sin. 
You've forgiven them. You've forgiven them. We thank you, Lord. We've confessed them and you're forgiving them. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Confession is the essential ingredient for forgiveness. Hallelujah. When you feel a tug of the Spirit that He's correcting you, stop immediately and ask God for forgiveness. Say, I was wrong. I'm wrong. And then turn around and say, Lord, I thank you that you corrected me. I thank you that you corrected me. Because without that, you're in trouble. We have the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. Thank you, Jesus, for the Spirit of God that leads us and guides us. Amen. Many times in life, I made a mistake and I felt that little nudge of the Spirit. That's not right. Don't do that. Boom, you got to stop right there and say, okay, Lord, okay, forgive me. I won't do that again. I won't think that thought. I won't say those words. I won't do whatever it is. And that's how fast it comes and goes. And then your slate is clean. Many Christians have unconfessed sin in their life that they've held on to through ignorance. I'm not saying that they were in rebellion. Sometimes through ignorance. And then they wonder why certain prayers are never answered. You got to get down before God, you and God, you got to say, Lord, what's holding this up? What is it? Is there something in my life that's holding this up? And then, when you confess it, it'll go. Say hallelujah. Come on, this is powerful stuff. Amen. You can't serve God with attitudes and bad attitudes and up and down and all around. You can't. You gotta learn how to forgive and also you gotta learn how to receive forgiveness. Some people can't forgive themselves. How many people want to talk about that? Just like um, the Herman Goring story. Couldn't forgive himself. You know why? Because he had never practiced confession. When you practice confession, then you learn how to forgive yourself. Say hallelujah. I deal with people all the time that have done things and they can't forgive themselves. When they've asked God to forgive them. And I say, did you ask God to forgive you? He said, yes. Well, then he has. And then forgive yourself. If God forgive you, you have no right to keep it, to hold on to it. The devil wants to keep that over your head all the time. Whatever it is, he wants to hold it over you all the time. You got to let it go. Say, thank you, Jesus. Let it go. Whoosh, just give it to him. At the end of service, then we're going to have a, uh, a giving to God. Hallelujah. We're going to give all the things that we can't let go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand. So, don't ever say I'm not blessed. You are blessed. Whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Hallelujah. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, one of us charge him with iniquity, with sin, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now, in whose spirit there is no deceit. Meaning, do you ever meet people that are never wrong? Right all the time? Never wrong. They're deceived. In their spirit, they're deceived. No, I'm not right. I'm not wrong. Never was. He's wrong. She's wrong. They're wrong. He's wrong. They're never wrong. Watch out for that. Because they're deceived. They're deceived. They're deceived in their spirit. David said, watch out. Don't be deceived in your spirit. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And then you have to confess it to the Lord. Say hallelujah. Amen. So, verse 2, he says... <clears throat> Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Amen. In other words, when you know you're wrong, you know you're wrong. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now, here's a big point in verse 3. This is big. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away. When I did not confess my sin, my body wasted away. In other words, 
there was an effect on his body because of the sin. Now, in verse in uh, Psalm 51, he talks about that effect also. There's an effect on you. There's an effect on you when you don't confess your sin. It's an effect on all of us. We don't confess it, we'll be sick. We'll be going to the doctors looking for something the doctor can't find. The doctor can't find the seed. He doesn't know what it looks like. He deals with physical things. He doesn't deal with spiritual things. Yeah. So he said, when I held in, I did not confess, I was sick. And you can expect to be sick when you know you're wrong and you don't confess it. Hallelujah. And you do. You get sick. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Back to the Bible. I kept silent about my sin. My body wasted away through my groaning all day long. Thank you, Jesus. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. He was struggling with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess who wins? <laughs> day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained. My life was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. And then finally, verse 5, I acknowledged my sin to you. Now notice who you acknowledge your sin to, to God. I acknowledge my sin to you. And my iniquity I did not hide. I didn't hide it. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. Hallelujah. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. So he says a miracle happened. Immediately when I confessed my sin, the guilt flew away. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The guilt flew away. It left. It's gone. I don't have it anymore. When I confessed, thank you, Jesus. When I confessed my sin to you, the guilt left me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hand. Hallelujah. We're guilt free under the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> guilt free under the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, it's all gone. Hallelujah, when it's under the blood, it's under the blood. Amen. Thank you, Lord, yes. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. God is so good. Hallelujah. Okay, where are we here now? You forgave the guilt of my sin. Okay? You forgave it. Now, guilt is like a debt you owe. But Jesus comes in and pays the debt. But you do owe. There's always a debt when there's a sin in our life. Always a debt. Thank you, Jesus, but he takes it away. So forgiveness is possible in any situation. If you're willing to confess, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. In my early years of ministry in Brooklyn, Was just out of school, Bible school, Bible college. And we were living there. It was the first year God brought me into contact with very some very unsavory characters. <laughs> and uh, God showed me what forgiveness could do. He showed me what forgiveness could do. And also, he showed me his patience. I never would have had patience with these people like God does. Thank you. Put your hands up. Say, thank you, Jesus, for your patience. God has patience. Thank you, Jesus, with all of us. Hallelujah. He has patience. Thank you, Jesus. And it was a young lady who was married to a man. They were both they were married. They had two sons. And the two uh, parents were, were heroin addicts. Heroin addicts. And um, she had a horrendous testimony. She had committed three murders. Three murders. And uh, 
I'm not going to get into the details. I just want to say, uh, don't you ever be her boyfriend and cheat on her. Because you, you were in trouble. In deep trouble. So, anyway, she told me these stories. I knew they were true. I knew they were true. And uh, I helped her get into forgiveness. I just said, we've got to ask God to forgive us for this. We can't, we can't live our lives with this. Because this will lead to more destruction. She was a very destructive person. If you took a look at her, you'd think, soaking wet, she doesn't weigh 80 pounds. But her mind was devious. You know, she could do a lot of bad things. She could do it. But God took care of it. Say, thank you, Jesus. God took care of the issue. Hallelujah. I've told Brother Dan a few of these stories, and uh, I, had to look, I came to a young man came into my office, and he was, it was, it was in like the spring, it was like in May, and I could see he was troubled. And I said, You're troubled? He said, Yes, I am. And usually my realm of questioning is, what do you do? Who are you? What do you do? I didn't know these people. I mean, the church was big. I didn't know them all one on one. Like I hear, I know most everybody one on one. When they walked in the office, usually my secretary, God bless her, she gave me a card and told me what their name was, who they were, what what the story was. You know, so at least I knew a little bit. So I said to him, "What do you What are you struggling with?" He said. I've done something years ago that I never confessed to anybody. Now, we have privilege. We can listen to this. We don't have to go to the police. How many of you understand? Okay, we have a privilege. And so, he said, you know, I did something very bad, which means usually means murder. You know. And uh, the strange thing is, he had killed another law enforcement, enforcement officer. By mistake, he wasn't attending to, but he did. I'm not gonna go into the whole story. Years later, he's married and he can't find a job, and somebody says to him, why don't you try out for the police? So he does, and he makes it in. And now he's a cop, and he's living with this craziness in his head. He's living with this. And so he's sitting in my office, and he's sweating profusely. This is the first time now he's decided in his mind he's going to confess this. He's never said this to anybody, to God, to know it. God is well aware of this, not hiding from God. He's sitting there and I said, okay, it's time to pray. It's time to confess and forsake. It's time to get forgiveness. We've got to go on. Now, he could have confessed and he could have confessed publicly and he would have went away forever. Maybe you know what I'm saying. Would have went away legally forever. But he had a wife and he had two sons. And in those situations, you've got to consider the whole thing, the whole package. Who's he going to affect? Whose life is he going to destroy? Now, he already destroyed one life. But whose life is he going to destroy? And as I prayed in the spirit, I knew that it was not right for him to go public with this. To stay here, and receive forgiveness from God, go on with your life. He had been on the force for about 10 or 15 years already. He had a life-changing experience. Thank you, Jesus. God forgave him. God forgave him. Put your hands up. God can forgive anything. The strangest situations. The strangest things. In the first situation of forgiveness with a young lady, she had participated in the murder of a priest. Now, I've got to be careful, I'm not going to say anything else. Just want to say, 
At that point, I felt like jumping up from my office and beating the crap out of it. But God said, no, 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 we're here to receive forgiveness. We're here to receive forgiveness. At least she could, she could confess that. And she did. God, God saved them. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, these people, most of them are gone dead by now anyway. This is 35 years ago. So thank you, Jesus. Forgiveness works. It'll change your life when you get forgiven. Say hallelujah. And you know you're forgiven. You know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. He's willing to forgive anything, anywhere, anytime, as long as you confess and forsake. Hallelujah. Wait, wait your hands on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that's one of the great privileges of sharing the gospel with people that don't know Jesus. You get a chance to lead them to forgiveness. When you pray the sinner's prayer with them, and you tell them, confess your sins. You don't have to confess to me, confess them to God right now. I'm a sinner, I did this, I did that, I did that, I did that. He is willing to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you. The, the, the real big thing is to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. First John chapter one, verse nine. It is written. That's right. He's willing to cleanse us. What an incredible gift from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that's a great privilege that you have when you talk about Jesus and salvation and forgiveness of people. When you lead them to ask for forgiveness of their sins, you tell them God's going to forgive them and their guilt is going to go. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Wave your hands up. Whatever it is, the guilt is going to go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Wherever, wherever, however, it's going to go. Thank you, Jesus. Back to the book. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Verse 5, he says, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I did not hide. Okay. And then in the bottom of the verse, he says, and you forgave the guilt. That's the big thing. That's the heaviness. The guilt of my sin. Verse 6, therefore let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not reach him. David learned a lesson. Another big lesson you got to learn. It's easier to ask for forgiveness immediately than to wait. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than to wait and then ask for it later. The devil gets you into this lie, this deceit, you're deceived. Don't, don't ask forgiveness now, you've got too many other things you've got to do. Too much other fun you're going to have. You're not going to have any fun. You're going to add to the account that you owe God. You're not going to have any fun. Exactly, by his word. So David said, you're going to get in trouble. It doesn't work. Let's go back. That's a powerful verse. I want to read that one more time. Verse 6. Powerful verse. And therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Okay. There'll be times in your life if you push off prayer that you won't be able, you won't feel as though you're getting through to God and you, you will know God hasn't answered your prayer. How many of you have been there? Come on. Put your hands up. If you serve God, you've been there and you understand what I'm saying. You understand exactly what I'm saying. So he said, don't listen to the lie of the devil that tells you you can ask forgiveness whenever you want. No, you can't. Oh, you can't. What I'm saying is, when the Spirit of God speaks to you, that's the time for you to jump and ask for forgiveness. That's the time for you to receive forgiveness. Well, I can pray tomorrow the next day. No, you can't. Because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. You don't know that. That's a lie. You do not know you'll have a chance to do it again. And then he says something great. He says, 
And in the flood of many waters, you won't get a chance. When there's a worldwide situation going on and everybody's running helter-skelter, you won't get a chance. Okay, people. Are, the flood he's talking about here is people. Yes. The people flood. All of a sudden, you won't get a chance. So when you, when the Spirit speaks to you, do it immediately. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Seven. You, he confesses to God, you are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. God will surround you with songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. You'll be happy all the time. Thank you, Jesus, all the time. Now, there'll be times when you're sad, but you're going to be happy the majority of your life when you're serving God. Say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Amen. Now suddenly, in David's life, a change comes right here in verse 8. A change, a big change comes. At first, the first seven verses, he's talking about his experiences with sin and what God was doing and he was struggling and so forth. Now, after he's accepted forgiveness and God has brought him back close to in relationship, now David becomes a teacher. Now he becomes a teacher, and he's teaching everybody what God will do. You know, that's exactly what God wants to do in your life. You share your knowledge on whatever level you have. You share it. God did this, God did that, God did something else for me. He, he answered this prayer, he answered that prayer. Now watch what he says here, this is beautiful. Beginning on verse eight. <clears throat> eight, new beginnings, all right. I will instruct you and teach you in the way in which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And then he says to the people, do not be as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose trappings include a bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. Exactly. Some people have to have problems all the time to make them seek God. Because if they don't, they don't have a problem. They won't, they won't, they'll ignore God. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. They'll go on with their life like it's merry, like it's merry, they're on their merry way, just having a good time, forgetting totally about who God is. Totally. So he says, in those cases, God's got a bit and he's got a bridle for you to pull you back into the lane. To pull you back, to hold. Thank God he's got a bit and a bridle. Amen. He's going to hold you in line. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, put your hands up. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's got a situation that will force you to go after him. Say, <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. After you serve the Lord for, for a few years, you see this very clearly. When people have decided they're not going to do what God wants, they're going to do what they want to do, I just shake my head. Don't worry, they'll be back. They'll be back talking to me about all the things and the disasters that happened to them. They'll be back. And that's what happens. They do come back say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But the beauty is, you didn't have to go through all that. You didn't have to go through all that suffering. You could have made it without that. Just by serving the Lord. By staying and listening to what God has to say. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, back to the book here. So he's teaching them these facts. These are facts that he's showing them. He said, I'm teaching you from my experience what God does. Ten. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. 
That's right. But he who trusts in the Lord, loving kindness shall surround him. So God promises to give sorrow to the people that don't serve him. They're going to have sorrow. They're going to have it. So look over here. <clears throat> but the loving kindness of the one who trusts in the Lord shall surround him. Verse 10. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, loving kindness, shall surround him. Now that doesn't mean that everything in your life is going to go smooth, calm, and easy. No, it's not. But still, the loving kindness of the Lord will surround you. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hands around. Amen. That's a promise from God. The loving kindness of God. What is the loving kindness? It's the covenant love. The covenant love of God. He's made a covenant with you. He's made a covenant with you. Not to forget about you. To protect you. To watch over you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. The loving kindness shall surround him. Now, here's verse 11. This is what David's saying. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones. That's why we start every, every service off with singing and music and praise to the Lord. Praise and worship. Why? Because we're commanded to be glad. To be happy in God. Say hallelujah. Be glad in the Lord. Rejoice, you righteous ones. And shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Thank you, Jesus. So we have a right to make noise. We have a right to shout for joy. We have a right to be beside ourselves sometimes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want everybody to come down to the front right now. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's some situations and some of our lives, now some of us have confessed everything, there's nothing that we can see or understand, but there's something somewhere, usually in somebody's life, that's a hindrance or a block to what God wants to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to confess anything out, but whatever God is talking to you about, He's going to help you confess it. You're going to, David said, I confess my sins to the Lord. Yes. And that's what we're taught to do. But we're coming here, and we're going to do it corporately. We're going to do it together. We're going to confess our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we stand in your presence today. And we can receive from you. We can receive from you. Total forgiveness as we confess different things in our minds, things that shouldn't be in our life, things that are holding us back, attitudes, attitudes, hallelujah, thoughts, grievances, he did this, he said that, she did this, she did that, and we give all that to you, Lord, we give it all to you, we give it all to you. We give it all to you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we give it up to you. And Lord, you're perfect. You're perfect. We're not perfect, but you are perfect. And as we give these different situations to you, we ask that you will remove the hurt and the guilt. Remove the hurts and the guilt that we have from carrying all this. We don't realize the effect it has on our bodies. The effect that it has. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We glorify your name.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We receive the covering. You cover our sin. Lord. You provide a covering for us. And our covering is the blood. Our covering is Jesus. We thank you. You provide a covering for us. For everything that was wrong. We glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We release the people that have sinned against us. We release them. We release them. We give them forgiveness. As we forgive them, you forgive us. We thank you, Lord. As we forgive them, we thank you, Lord. We forgive them. And you forgive us. As we confess, you forgive us. Hallelujah. We thank you today for confession, for the privilege of confession, for the privilege of being cleansed and receiving forgiveness for all eternity, forever. And these things will never be brought up by you again. Hallelujah. They're never brought up. Thank you, Jesus. When they come back into our mind, it's satanic. It's Satan trying to confuse you. It's Satan trying to confuse us. And we thank you. We're not going to be confused because we're not made for confusion. Hallelujah. We're not made for confusion. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. We agree, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And we agree today, Father, that this people is receiving forgiveness and they're applying it to their lives. And they're not going to let Satan talk them out of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is our privilege, and we receive it, and we take it, and we reach out and receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pray.